Hello, I'm Michael Novacek, Senior Vice President and Provost of Science and Curator of Paleontology at the American Museum of Natural History. Please join me for a flight, with the help of Google Earth, to just some of the expeditions we conducted in 2013. Let's fly in from outer space to our home base at the museum in New York City. This is the launching pad for more than 100 expeditions annually. We are increasingly conducting the kind of more ambitious, multidisciplinary, and technology-enriched expeditions that we've envisioned for our new Explore 21 initiative. Next, we take a flight out west to the dry, high plains and river valleys of western South Dakota. Seventy million years ago, during the Cretaceous period, the last age of the dinosaurs, this whole area was covered by a shallow inland sea that actually divided North America into eastern and western land masses. Bluffs and cliffs along the Cheyenne River and other drainages expose a very important fossil-rich marine layer, the Cretaceous Pierre Shale. Here, paleontology curator Neil Landman and his team are investigating an ancient methane seep. During the late Cretaceous, the seeps were like oases at the bottom of the seaway and formed an rich ecosystem that attracted thousands of animals, including the coiled shelled ammonites. Notice the exposures of the Black Pierre shale and part of the crew collecting specimens at the seeps. Next, we take a trip down to South America in the Great Amazon Basin, the world's largest and richest sink for biodiversity. As usual, the Amazon was a very active area this year for museum explorers. In Peru, in the western reaches of the Amazon Basin, curator and dean John Flynn, in collaboration with the Lima Natural History Museum, led a research expedition to Miocene age, that is 12 million year old vertebrate bearing deposits. The river unfortunately rose prematurely and at least for the remainder of this field season, covered the research site. Moving down the Great River, the forest continues as the home of a tremendously rich flora and fauna, including millions of species of insects. Here, naturally enough, we find invertebrate zoology curator Jim Carpenter, again conducting surveys and collecting diverse social wasp species. Social wasps, as their name suggests, have complex behaviors and societal organization and build colonial nests with intricate architecture. Some of these nests, like the one shown here, are often raided by hordes of army ants. Flying north, we leave the basin for more open country in the Barinas region of Venezuela. This is cattle, ranch, and farm country that borders the Andes to the west and the Cordillera de Merida to the north. Here, Charles Spencer and research associate Elsa Redman have been carrying out excavations of sites with occupations dating to A.D. 300 to 1000. The largest site, known as El Gavan, had numerous earthworks, including two large mounds more than 10 meters high, as well as 134 smaller mounds. The entire site was circumscribed by an earthwork, oval in shape as shown both in the Google image and this aerial photo. Mound A, the largest mound at the site, according to radiocarbon dates, was built around AD 550. Leaving the New World, we fly to the Mideast, where curator Lorenzo Prendini undertook fieldwork in Israel and Jordan, focusing on training, intensive collecting, and study of scorpions. In Israel, Dr. Prendini gave an intensive one-week course to 28 participants, followed by a week of fieldwork. This work was also funded by Tel Aviv University and Ben-Gurion University of the Negev under the auspices of the Israel Taxonomy Initiative and the Royal Jordanian Society for Conservation of Nature. Scorpions are, of course, extremely important predators in many ecosystems, ranging from deserts to dense tropical forests. Dr. Prendini and other specialists are finding new species in many areas worldwide. Here are two scorpions photographed under ultraviolet light during nighttime fieldwork in the Negev Desert. Heading northeastward, we fly over the great arc of the Himalaya and descend into the complex intersection of mountain ranges in the Pamir Plateau, or the roof of the world. 
The plateau embraces Tajikistan, the smallest country in Central Asia. Tajikistan is a rugged, vertiginous place whose average elevation is over 9,800 feet. The paleontology curator Meng Jin and an international team explored this poorly known terrain, looking for fossil mammals in deposits ranging from 50 to 100 million years old. In order to see how the dramatic mountain uplift may have affected environmental and ancient faunal changes in the region. At least on this venture, they did not have great luck and concluded with some first hand experience that the region is a tough place for paleontological exploration. Flying farther north to the vast expanse of Central Asia, we find paleontology curator and chair Mark Norell and myself leading our 24th joint expedition with the Mongolian Academy of Sciences to the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. Perhaps the high point of the trip was the discovery of an excellent theropod dinosaur skeleton. Here you see some of the ribs. The skeleton, however, is in a rock matrix that is unusually hard for Gobi sediments. After carefully burying the skeleton, we will come back next year with jackhammers to drill it out. The image here shows the international nature of our young team. Banya Erdin Jago, a Mongolian student, Maral Baira, a Mongolian student studying geology at Bristol University in England, and Gilder grad students Aki Watanabe and Chin Jianye. Aki indeed discovered the skeleton. We now leave Asia for the vast Pacific Ocean and the Solomon Islands, where our inaugural Explore 21 expedition took place this September. Casting off from the port capital city of Honoria, the expedition hit many spots. These included the remote Hele Islands and nearby Tetapare, the largest uninhabited island in the tropical Pacific. Then to Kavachi, one of the most active submarine volcanoes in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. Frequent eruptions eject molten lava up to 70 meters above sea level and sulfurous steam plumes up to 500 meters and to the isolated volcanic island Maborokua, with its variety of pristine ecosystems. The Solomon Island expedition, led by ichthyology curator John Sparks, along with microbial curator Ensu Kim and research scientist Chris Filardi, was made possible with the generous support of the Dalio Foundation, which also provided the opportunity to avail ourselves of the research vessel Alusia. The expedition was indeed equipped with the latest and greatest technology, including submersibles outfitted with new high-definition color cameras and specialized lighting. Here is John cruising and observing in the Triton submarine Nadir. The team has discovered new creatures of life, namely biofluorescent and bioluminescent species, and thus has achieved a better understanding of these wonderful luminous ecosystems, not only for fishes, but also marine invertebrates, like the corals shown in this striking picture. The Solomons are perfect for these prospects, as virtually no one has explored the deep reefs and the open water habitats of their myriad islands. Flying over the Pacific, we now head back to our home base camp in New York City. Google Earth reveals the topography of the ocean floor, where deep trenches actually mark the boundaries of tectonic plates. We land back at the museum with its 32 million specimens and artifacts collected over decades by great numbers of previous expeditions. We also visit our wonderful exhibition from the Te Papa Museum in New Zealand and contemplate the bones of the great whales that swam in the deeps not far from the wanderings of our Explore 21 expedition to the Solomons. You can follow our expeditions throughout the year by visiting aimnh.org. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed our flight. Thank you.